the Black Pagoda Vine, an absolutely beautiful trailing house plant with some of the most amazing foliage. I mean, the pattern on the top plus the purple on the back, absolutely gorgeous. Welcome to my leaves. Now they might look like a Hoya, but they're actually a variety of lipstick plants. Its botanical name is Euchcanthus longiculus, but it's also known as the zebra basket vine and of course the black pagoda. Even though most lipstick plants are very well known for their blooms, their bright reds and orange colors, the black pagoda vine really stands out as a foliage plant. They do have blooms, in fact mine's in bloom right now, but their flowers are more of a yellowy green sort of color so they really don't stand out against the foliage. But nothing has these leaves. Oh, it's gorgeous. For the sunlight, black pagodas really want bright indirect light and no harsh direct sun. Now I keep mine in my morning sun window and it does fantastic for me and I swear this guy is always in bloom. If you never see your black pagoda vine blooming and you're also noticing small leaves, then it just needs brighter sun, so bring it into a brighter spot. On the other hand though, if you're seeing scorched leaves or burn marks, then it's getting too much direct sunlight and you need to pull it back. For the soil, just make sure that they have something really gritty and free draining so that the water goes right through, just so that it doesn't get root rot. If you're finding this video helpful, please go ahead and plant your finger on that like button. Now, because this plant is susceptible to root rot, it is extremely important that you allow the soil to completely dry out in between waterings. I know that some people online are telling people to keep the soil evenly moist, but I respectfully disagree with that. I really think you'll run into root rot issues if you do that. I let my soil completely dry out. In fact, I never even check the soil at all. All I have to do, and it's so easy, is the taco test. So I pick one of the older, more established leaves, and I see if I can sort of bend it into a taco. If it's sort of nice, hard, and firm, it doesn't need any water and the plant's fine. But as soon as I can move that leaf into sort of a flexible taco shape, I know it's interested in some water and I will give her a drink. Don't try to do this with one of the younger leaves. They're all flexible when they're young, so that won't be a good indicator. Use one of the older, more established leaves for this. And he will prefer filtered or rainwater if you have it. For temperature, they like between 60 and 80, but basically room temperature. If you're comfortable, they will be too. It is a good idea to give this guy fertilizer about once a month in the spring and summer, just during the growing season, just to keep him going. Okay, for pests for this plant, this plant is amazing because even though when you read about it, it will tell you that it's susceptible to every pest, I have literally never seen a pest on this plant, not one. So in my opinion, this plant is pest resistant, but if you have seen pests on your plant, let me know. But how amazing is that? This is one of my absolute favorite house plants that I have because it's so easy, like I said, with the watering and it just wants bright indirect light. It's so, so beautiful. It's basically pest free. Like, it's amazing. If you don't already have a black pagoda vine, I highly encourage you to get one. It is so worth it. You will not regret it. If you already have a black pagoda vine, please put your care tips down in the comments below. And also, please let me know if you've ever seen any pests on it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here today. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. My name is Sam. This is Mind the Leaves. And as always, take care of your plants and yourself.